Hello YouTube and Preppers, this is the Comms Prepper with a video about bandwidth and channel spacing. I've received a lot of messages and comments about this so I thought I'd dedicate a video to it. I'm going to pick on the three common radio services that are popular with Preppers because uh, they serve as good examples. On the first slide here, uh, on the upper left hand side is GMRS and you can see that I highlighted in red that that's a 25 kilohertz service and then below that I have FRS which is a 12.5 kilohertz service and then on the right hand side I have MERS which is a mixed bag of non-standard uh, bandwidth and that's uh, the first three channels is 11.25 and the last two is 20 kilohertz so I'm going to start off with channel spacing first and I'm going to use a ruler here as an example 25 kilohertz channel spacing, this is what's typically known as wideband. And what that is, is every 25 kilohertz in an assigned spectrum, they'll issue a frequency or a channel. And they're spaced out at 25 kilohertz apart. And this is how it's been for quite some time. And looking at the ruler below, you can see I'm drawing an analogy to every inch they issue a frequency. And in the non-free services like public safety and business band where the FCC can sell these frequencies for money you can see how much money they're making they're making some money every inch and as technology has improved and radios have become a little bit better they came up with a solution to make more money and that was to double the number of channels issued in the same amount of space so instead of issuing a channel every inch they cut that channel spacing down by half and now they issue a channel every 12.5 kilohertz and if you look at the ruler you can see you double your money but if you cut your channel spacing in half you have to cut the bandwidth of the channel in half as well or you'll overlap in each other and we'll get into this a little more later but to help pr provide some perspective here uh, I have an example here with some math so you can see how it's done. So for this example I use GMRS channel 1 462550 and if I add 12 kilohertz to that or looking at the math here 0 0.0125 megahertz the answer is 4625625 which is channel 2 in the GMRS radio service and this pattern repeats itself at least all the way through the 462 piece of GMRS and this is channel spacing. This is not the bandwidth of a channel. This is just how they issue the frequencies. So now we'll get into the bandwidth of a channel. On this slide, it's a spectrum analyzer print sh or screenshot, and you see a blue bell curve. And a red vertical line runs down the center. That red vertical line is the actual assigned frequency. So when you program your radio and you put the frequency in, that red line represents what you put in the display of your radio. And again, I used the ruler analogy, the one inch mark being, let's say, frequency one. Now, the bandwidth for that frequency is determined by the FCC, and what they're saying is you're assigned this frequency in the display of your radio, but as you're transmitting, you can't deviate any further to the left or the right of that, or below or above that frequency, than what's specified for that channel. And that's what bandwidth is, this bell curve. And in this ruler example, it's you can't go any further than three quarter inches below the frequency or three quarter inches above the frequency. That's the bell curve. So here I have highlighted the actual bell curve. And I'm going to go into depth here on the bell curve a little bit more with this slide. So wideband or 25 kilohertz. You'll see this in your software when you're programming your radios. And what this actually means is this is a designation assigned by the FCC that they say the bell curve or the bandwidth of a wideband 25 kilohertz channel shall not exceed 16 kilohertz in totality from the left side to the right side of the bell curve. And you can divide this in half, 8 kilohertz on the left or 8 kilohertz on the right, but when you add them together, your bell curve, your bandwidth cannot exceed. 16 kilohertz. The F3E means analog frequency modulation. But the 16K0 is the important piece here. 16,000 kilohertz is the max deviation you can have for this wideband bell curve. 
Now radios aren't set to this max. They shrink that in a little bit to account for possible frequency error in the radio to higher or lower frequencies. So at a factory or when you take your radio in for service, the technician on a wideband channel will set the deviation or the max deviation for your bell curve at five kilo, plus or minus five kilohertz on the left and the right side of the center frequency. And in this case, it's 462.550 for channel one of the GMRS service. And they do this, like I said, and you'll see on this next slide, if your radio is out of alignment, as you see the bell curve shifts to the left, if it shifts a little bit and it's off center as indicated by the top arrow, red arrow, if you look at the lower left red arrow, you're still within the tolerances for that channel assignment as issued by the FCC. So here's how it looks when you look at more than one 25 kilohertz wideband channel with 25 kilohertz channel spacing. These little blue bell curves fit nicely, evenly spaced across a radio spectrum. And like I said, there's that little bit of buffer space between each one to accommodate frequency error. But it's a nice, even, consistent pattern. You have a wideband bell curve on a wideband channel spacing and everything fits in nicely. And what they do is they go to narrow banding and this is what it looks like. You cut that channel spacing down in half and you can double the number of channels. But what they also did is they cut the maximum allowable bell curve from 16 kilohertz to 8, cutting it in half. And the vendors, when they set the modulation level, cut it from 5 plus or minus 5 KCs to plus or minus 2.5 kilohertz. And that's how you fit double the amount of channels in the same amount of space. You're deviating half as much and you're not going out as far when you're assigning these channels one after the other. And that's how narrow banding is achieved. And that's the difference between wide band and narrow band. How much modulation you have and how those channels are spaced in a specific chunk of spectrum. Now I'm going to pick on GMRS here because that's what we're familiar with as preppers. A lot of us have these radios. Oddly enough, GMRS channel spacing is every 12.5 kilohertz. Boom, 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 boom. And you'll see I highlighted here in green in the middle, those are actually the channels that are shared with the FRS radio service. So GMRS is spaced at 12.5 kilohertz, but as the FCC website indicates, they're still using 25 kilohertz of bandwidth. So these channels are actually overlapping a little bit. So if you've ever used radios and heard some co-channel or adjacent channel interference on your radio, it could be that there was somebody right next to you on the next channel transmitting and their bell curve was entering into your bell curve in your receiver. You're picking up some of their transmission. And this is why, because you have a 25 kilohertz channel assigned at 12.5 kilohertz of channel spacing. And if that's not bad enough or confusing enough, as I covered in previous videos, seven of the channels of the GMRS radio service are shared with the family radio service. And that's indicated with these little green narrow band bell curves because FRS is a narrow band service. So they're only putting out half the modulation as GMRS if the radios are configured correctly. So you can think that you're on a GMRS channel and as you can see, you might actually hear FRS users and that might cause some confusion, but that's the reality. Seven of the GMRS channels are shared with the FRS radio service. And here's actually one frequency example. Another anomaly you might experience as a prepper, if you have a GMRS radio and an FRS radio trying to communicate with each other. The GMRS radio is set for wideband, as you can tell by the blue bell curve. When the FRS radio transmit to the GMRS radio, the modulation is cut by half. So it may sound like the FRS radio user is whispering or have low modulation. You won't hear it as well in the GMRS radio because that radio is looking for a much wider bandwidth at the receiver. Just the opposite for the FRS user who has a narrow bandwidth on the receiver, 
the GMRS radio might sound like the user is screaming into the radio or be loud and distorted. So again, that's another anomaly preppers might experience because of narrow band and wide band. A third anomaly you might experience is co-channel overlap. And here's an example of a GMRS channel with the blue bell curve next to an FRS channel with the green bell curve and they cross. And I highlighted that with the little red, red circle. So the modulation is interfering in each, other cha each other's channel. So you might hear some distortion or some other signals out there that are breaking your squelch and you can't put your finger on it. This could be the reason. It's just enough of the adjacent channel's bell curve encroaching on your space or your bell curve to trip your, your receiver. So, I hope I didn't confuse you too much and at the risk of uh, losing subscribers for having a video that's too technical, I appreciate you bearing with me here. Uh, please leave a comment if you have any questions on this or you'd like to see a specific topic uh, covered in future videos. And as always, thank you for watching and thank you for subscribing. Uh, this has been the Comms Prepper.